rolling into the dirt. And again, look at the extension on the legs in this Indian air. Kick way out. Oh, he goes for the no hands. Look at this. He's so far away. He's pulling on one side of the bike, and he never, ever checks the bars before he lands. Well, I think the judges are liking what Javier Vieira has had. Edelberg still stand a chance. What have we got on use, of course? Of course, the challenge of the tricks is in there. Vieira gets it. He's going to advance through to the semi-finals. Great run for the Chilean. Well, with that round being six sick tricks, in Javier Villegas, has the right man gone through? He has. I mean, it was too close to call for me there. But I think Villegas really took advantage of being the second rider out because, like you say, it's only six tricks. And he went out there and kind of matched Adelberg. His no-handed landing certainly wasn't as big as Adelberg's Clifton no-handed landing. But Villegas, you know, we saw that new upside down combo he was on about the Cordova to Superman. He used that to his advantage. But more interesting than that for me was Adelberg's the only guy who successfully flipped off that dirt kicker in the middle of that four-pack in practice. Villegas nearly ended up looking like something that had fallen off a church trying it. But then he knew he had to do it, and he did it. Big flip trick for him. That pulled it for him. Big round, and the right man's gone through. So, Javier Villegas has booked his place in the semis alongside Danny Torres and Thomas Pages. The fourth and final spot is still up for grabs in the last quarterfinal between David Ronaldo and Ego Sato. Let's see how it unfolds now with our commentator, Tess Saul. Thanks, Tim. This one actually is going to be an interesting matchup. The young Frenchman versus the number one qualifier in Japan's Ego Sato. Ronaldo getting it started off. Big tsunami. Take a look at this. That is great execution. I love the bend in the legs. Oh, coming in, trying the lazy boy, but watch this one. Bent at the waist, he's not flat against the seat. Nice rock solid. Oh, has to correct the bike a little bit. Judges looking on. You see this, but he doesn't manage to land this one fully. Goes for the Cordova flip. Not really perfect execution from Minaldo, but he's enjoying it. Sato knows what he has to do here. <laughs> Needs to take Ronaldo down. Little correction on the bars there of a steering damper. Going for the Indian end, not getting all of it, but still a great trick. Going into the double-double. Wow! The energy this guy rides with is just unbelievable. Watch this. Huge holy grab. Whoa! Going into the big ramp and at the last minute decides to pull out. Don't think the judges will actually count that last big trick. Oh! Almost coming up short and still goes for the second jump. Look at this. Kiss of death. The bike doesn't rotate fully and he still manages to get it. Mistakes from both sides, but I think Sato managed to put together the fuller run. Let's see who the judges go for in style. Yes, it's going to be Ego Sato squeaking by over David Ronaldo. Great victory for Ego. Is it just me, or does your heart go wild every time you watch Ego Sato as well? Every single time. I mean, that's why he's the number one qualifier here, though. He felt at home on that course, the big course before anyone else. He always does. He's always a little bit scruffy, Tim. You know, he always overtakes things because he goes so big. He's never got his feet together. But, you know, Ronaldo, no match for him. And so it looked to me like he charged the big 100 foot there and pulled out at the last minute. And I was like, no, please. You need to capitalize on that qualifier. You know, he's never won an X Fighters. Turned it around. 
how long did he hold on to that KOD? And he still sent the big double after it. You know, he's like Yoda. He's old, but he's still deadly. Well, there we go. All of the semi-final spots have now been filled. And this is how the riders will compete in the all-important next round. Danny Torres goes up against Javier Villegas and Thomas Pages takes on Ego Sato. The FMX madness continues here in Munich. Plus, find out what happened when Rob here was faced with the opportunity to ride an FMX ramp for the very first time. Can you tell I'm nervous, look? It's an epic moment. And trust me, you will not want to miss it. We'll see you right after the break here on Dave. Red Bull X Fighters World Tour. So far, the event has had more sizzle than a hot pan of Bratwurst, and we've got the second course semi-finals being served in a few minutes' time, featuring Torres against Villagas and Thomas Pages against Ego Sato. But first, there are very many words that you could use to describe Rob here, a few of them broadcastable. One thing you cannot say is that he is a fair weather fan of freestyle motocross because sometimes he actually goes and puts himself quite literally in the boots of the freestyle riders who are some of the most insane sportsmen on the planet. Isn't that right? I was on a very small scale. Have a look at this. <laughs> I've been riding motocross for about 20 years now, and every lap, you know, you let any number of jumps. All dirt takeoffs, though. This is a very different proposition. The backbone of any freestyle motocross course is the FMX ramp. Big, metal, and incredibly steep. I stupidly said, yeah, it can't be that difficult. So here I am at the FMX Forever compound. Today is the day when I'm going to tackle a ramp for the first time. I'm either going to go off it, I'm either going to bottle it, or I'm going to end up in hospital. Well, Jimmy, you're a FMX rider, head judge at X-Fighters, so I'm putting my life in your hands. You should know what you're talking about. But just looking at the ramp, it's just so steep. My biggest fears are, are either coming up short, not making it to the foam, or worst case scenario, jumping over it. But nothing looking at it from here. Honestly, I'd say it's third gear and hit it pretty hard. No, no. Third gear? You never see that foam pit. <laughs> you clear it. <laughs> Feeling a little bit, a little bit delicate in the stomach region. <laughs> Is that normal? Yeah, it's normal. Otherwise, we're not doing this sport. But uh, we go. have uh, Nick Franklin here. He can show you the speed. You just have a look at it, think about it, and do it. All right, let's hit the ramp. Let's do it. Why am I doing this? Pretty gnarly. Stops pretty quick. Clout with myself a little bit where I shouldn't have done. <laughs> That's horrible. Ouch. Now is the big moment when I've got to, you know, there's no safety now. I've got to go to dirt. So let's do it. Let's do it right now. You can tell I'm nervous, look. <laughs> Well, I can't hide my relief. Managed to go off a freestyle ramp. It's been a good afternoon, but I suppose before I go, I should just try one more thing. Check this out. <laughs> well, that was very impressive, but there's one thing that I just want to check with you very quickly. Have a look at this. Don't drop me back in, Jimmy! Jimmy! Don't f about 
man, this is dangerous. Take me down a bit. Jimmy, take it down a bit. Oh, God, dude, there's no phone. There's no phone, there's no phone. Jesus, don't f out, man. Just get it up. <laughs> Just put it down. What's wrong with you? Put it down. Put it down. Idiot. Well, you know, I thought without Ed being here, I might escape ridicule this week, but I guess I deserve it. But to be fair, I was 16, I mean, 60 feet up in the air, dangling by two little bits of string, and I don't like heights. 60 feet? Well, that's what you say. Right, it's time to head trackside now because we're about to witness a display of how it should be done in the first of our semi finals. It's Danny Torres up against Javier Villegas, and earlier on, we sat them down to find out what are their sources of motivation here in Munich. Many years ago, I, I watched in the TV the freestyle and I said, oh, I, I would like to do that. And finally, one promoter of, uh, from Spain told me, oh, Danny, do you want to try that? And I said, oh, yeah, I want to try. And yeah, thank you for this guy because uh, my first event is uh, with him. But I think that the more important is my family because every time I know that my family is there for help me. I think that I need to do the big trees, big tricks for from win because the other riders has a big, big tricks. Mainly the people that motivate me to be on top, it's my wife and kids. Even when I'm hurt, just looking at them give me that extra power to stand up and get over my injuries and get ready for the next one. It's been a great season for me right now. Uh, I started with a podium in, in X Fighters Dubai. Uh, I moved, I've been consistent enough to move to second place now in the series. After Madrid, I wanted to take a, a short vacation, but I say like, hell no, I'm just gonna go back home, get my bike practice and learn some new stuff, and, and I got some new stuff that I want to show here. Now into the semi-finals, where the riders have 90 seconds to put in the best freestyle run they possibly can. This matchup, Torres versus Viejas, and certainly Javier in second place in the series has a lot to prove tonight, but Torres coming out strong. The big stripper flip again. Look at the extension on that great execution. Oh, I like it. He goes for the executioner in the flip. Watch this, reaching back, tapping that boot. Again, fantastic execution. Torres, the sidewinder. First it was Pastrana, then Adams. Now Torres owns this trick. Ramon Torres, Danny's father, looking on with concern. And a big turn down whip for Danny Torres. Watch the bike almost going completely backwards. And I would say that Danny Torres has really impressed this Munich crowd. Great execution on every trick. And Danny's gonna claim it. So now Javier Viejas knows he has his work cut out for him. But he has looked strong since his little get off in practice. Coming out there, a big Indian air flip. Really trying to get his extension and his execution to the max. Oh, that is just amazing. A Cordova and then off the back of the bike into that Superman, just perfect. Yes, going for that nine o'clock knack, extending the bike out a little bit more, actually getting the flat liner out of that one. So far, not much to decide between both Javier and Danny. Oh! What happened there? Looked like he was going for maybe a no-handed flip. Oh, it looks like Javier is actually suffering there. Trying to see, maybe came up a little short, but he doesn't go for the trick. Takes one hand off barely and then lands it. In definite pain, being held back into the riders' area. What a terrible end to Javier's night. Well, 
there you go. A bit of a strange one there. Danny Torres getting a pass through. It looked like an injury to Villegas.